Good morning, Fairfield Christian. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. It is once again Monday. We are back into scripture memorization. We had last week off from scripture memorization because we had no chapel last week and we went to the beach. Hope you guys had a great time at the beach. But now it's Monday. It's time to get back to scripture memorization. Time to get back to school. So let's jump right on in. This week we are in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 7 verses 1 through 3. And we are looking at a very specific person today. His name is Melchizedek. Now, that might be a little bit of a hard name to say, especially for some of you younger students. So, if you want, we can just call him Mel. All right, we're gonna talk about Mel just a little bit. Let's go through the verse first, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. So again, we're in Hebrews chapter seven, verses one through three. This is what it says. This Melchizedek was king of the city of Salem and also a priest of God Most High. When Abraham was returning home after winning a great battle against the kings, Melchizedek met him and blessed him. Then Abraham took a tenth of all he had captured in battle and gave it to Melchizedek. The name Melchizedek means king of justice, and king of Salem means king of peace. There is no record of his father or mother or any of his ancestors, no beginning or end to his life. He remains a priest forever, resembling the Son of God. How many of you guys like a mystery? I like a good mystery. You know, talking last week, we talked about Luke. He was an investigator, right? He liked to find the truth. Well, this is something that would probably greatly interest Luke, finding the truth about Melchizedek. This is a huge mystery. It says he has, there's no record of his father or mother. We don't know who his parents are. We don't know who any of his ancestors are. We don't know when his life began or when it ever ended. In fact, it says there is no beginning or end to his life. That's a mystery. And it says that he remains a priest forever. That, that assumes he doesn't die. And he resembles the Son of God. Man, there's a lot of clues here, but a huge mystery. And let me tell you, there's a lot of disagreement sometimes about who this Melchizedek is. In fact, uh, I, I remember a very famous conversation between two pastors I was having lunch with and they were discussing Melchizedek and it was quite humorous as they were arguing back and forth about who Melchizedek or Mel really was. But there are some things that I definitely want to point out. We'll talk about things all week and obviously in chapel as well. But one thing I do want to point out to you today is that Melchizedek was not the same type of person as Abraham. Now in the Old Testament, we always, when we think of God's people, we always tend to think of the Jews, right? God's chosen people. And yes, they were the ones God chose, and those are the primary people that are worshiping God in the Old Testament. But there are people also in the Old Testament that are not Jewish, that also worship God. And Melchizedek is one of them. He is not Jewish. In fact, his ways are probably a little bit different than Abraham's ways. And you know what? That's okay. You know why? Because they both worship God. God. That's the most important thing. And for today, what I want you to take away is that even though you're a Christian, there might be somebody else who's a Christian who might do things a little bit differently than you do. It doesn't mean that they're a better or a worse Christian. They might just do things differently. There are some important fundamentals, right? Like Jesus is the only way to salvation. We need to believe that God's word is his unerring truth. And there are a few other important things that need to be in common. But some things may be a little bit different between yourself and other Christians. But you both worship Jesus. You both worship God. You both worship the Holy Spirit. And just because you do things a little bit differently does not mean that one person is right or one person is wrong. As Christians, we need to come together. No matter our background, our history, where we came from, no matter what Christian church we go to, we need to come together in unity to, to build and spread the kingdom of God. And this is what's happening here with Abraham and Melchizedek. Was Melchizedek a king over Abraham? No, but it says here that Abraham gave him a tenth of his spoils from war. And in chapel, we'll talk a little bit more about the war and how they got into this war in the first place and that kind of stuff. But the thing is, Abraham won a war. The whole reason he won this war is because God helped him to win this war. He was rescuing his relative Lot, and God helped him to do that. 
And in rescuing Lot, he also got back all of Lot's possessions and a lot of other things, freed a bunch of other people from captivity as well. And to thank God, Abraham gave some of his possessions, some of those things he won, to Melchizedek, who was a priest of God. He was also a king of the city of Salem. There's a lot to unpack there. But the important thing is they were different, and yet they worshiped the same God. Don't forget that when you're meeting with other Christians. Again, we'll talk about this more on in chapel on Friday. Hopefully you guys are talking in, talk about it in class as well throughout the week. Make sure you guys are memorizing it. For you uh, upper grade students, it is quite long this week, but I know you guys are capable. In fact, if you started last week, like I suggested, you should have it down this week, no problem. All right, you guys have an awesome week. I'll see you around campus. God bless.